This is Michael Devolano from Pucks and Dreams, and this is my preview of the Minnesota Wild for the 2019-20 season. I'm going to just jump ahead here. The team last year really, really struggled, barely played at 500, which in today's modern NHL is not going to get you into the playoffs. It was an interesting offseason where fairly new general manager Paul Fenton, who came over from Nashville, was replaced by Bill Guerin, who had been... Uh, an assistant GM in Pittsburgh, longtime NHL player. This move was prompted, I guess, publicly for whatever turmoil was going on in the Minnesota Wild front office. And frankly, there were a lot of head-scratching moves for me last year and prior. I probably started actually with the bottom of these, which is losing Alex Tuck to Las Vegas in the expansion draft, I never understood that. Here's a six foot four guy that looked like he was on the verge of contributing offensively, and he's been a terrific player and signed to a long term contract with Vegas. There were a lot of other guys they could have let go. Uh, this just seems like a team that has a lot of assets, but it's just not adding up. Uh, the The move of Michael Granlin for Kevin Fiala blew my mind. Um, Charlie Coyle has probably never really panned out offensively to the extent that you would hope, but I'm not sure, is that more Coyle or is that more how he's been utilized? In, in Minnesota, he seemed to be used on, in the center position on the third line, which to me, he's got a lot of potential there, but just hasn't panned out. So moving Coyle, essentially getting back to Nato and some other pieces, but Nino Niederreier to Carolina might have been the P.S. de resistance that put the nail in Fenton's coffin, in my opinion. Niederreier went on to Carolina, had a huge impact on that lineup. Coming back was Victor Rask, who has just never lived up to his full capability and has really fallen off the radar. And at this point, it looks like an asset you can't even trade for anyone. Meanwhile, Niederreier is a top six forward in Carolina who look like you know pretty much they're going to be, if not on the bubble, but in the playoffs. Bruce Boudreaux was really surprised that they brought him back, but maybe with all the turmoil, um, they continue to go through camp with the same coach, and just the late replacement of Paul Fenton with Bill Guerin didn't really give them time to address that. But I just don't see him lasting out the season. I think he's kind of shown that he's not successful in the playoffs, and now he can't even get them into the playoffs at his team. So I think that might be near the end. He's had success in the NHL, and he seems to be a player's coach, but he might just be not what this team needs at this point. Um, on a positive note, Eric Stahl had a terrific year last year. Jason Zucker continues to prove to be a productive NHL player. Um, Miko Koivu, he's what he is. You know, veteran, big body down the middle, creates some offense, 200-foot player. Zach Parise, you're always going to be worried about injuries with him, but he's a heart and soul guy, and he can contribute still offensively. However, there's a lot of... A lot of questions I have around player development on this team. Like, there's guys like Luke Kunin and Joel Erickson Eck, who I thought would have taken a step up, Jordan Greenaway. Uh, they brought in Ryan Hartman in the offseason. I don't know. There's just a lot of questions on this roster. Their best prospect and player, maybe their most talented player, is not even on the team. Um, now, he was a late round draft pick, so you knew you were going to have this issue with Kaprizov. He may never play in Minnesota, he's still in the KHL in Russia. They did bring in Matt Zuccarello in the offseason, but they seem to be tripling down on older guys. Zuccarello is really skilled. Why they let... I don't know. I think Fenton did this deal. Why you let him do that deal before replacing him, I don't know, because they gave Zuccarello, I think, four years times six million. If he can be productive and healthy, then he's a really dynamic offensive player. He's smart. He's quick. He's really made for this today's NHL. He can you know, make plays, but... He's getting up there, and I'm not sure that was such a great contract. Uh, not having Matt Dumbo, which is another point on here, he missed pretty much the whole year. This is an offensive defenseman who's really he's a really good number two right shot defenseman. Then they signed Jared Spurgeon to a long term contract. I'm not sure if I would have signed him to that contract. I think it was like seven million a year. Yes, he's pretty good, but not you know I I don't know. I think you could do other things with that cash. Maybe I'm wrong. They like him. He's he's mobile. He's a smaller D. He's pretty good competitor off one-on-one. -on -one. So I guess in that sense, yes, he could be a top three on this team. Ryan Suter continues to be a very, very effective number one D. He's not perfect, but he is legitimately a good defenseman. 
Jonas Brodeen is very solid. Again, I, I kind of view him as a number three. So if you take those top four all into consideration, then you know that's a pretty good top four. And Brad Hunt looks like he might stick again this year. He's got, again, a smaller D, always able to produce offensively, always a bit of a question mark defensively. But he seems like he'll stick because there's just a gap there on this team and defensively. Okay, if I look, go back and look at the forwards. Um, sorry, I forgot to update the... Uh, voodoo math for the forwards on this team so i think on offense you can still count on Parise for 18 to 20 goals maybe a little bit more it just depends on his health koivu i'm probably being super generous at 22 goals but i'm probably selling eric Stahl a little bit short he had a really solid year last year jason zucker seems to be pretty good for 27 lots of question marks after this what is kevin fiala is he a 24 or 25 goal score approaching 30 or is he like a 12 to 15 goal scorer with a lot of talent that never pans out? Um, Ryan Hartman, what is he? Is he really a top six forward? I'm not convinced of that. Kunin, I thought would have been um, a second line player for them at this point, but something's amiss. They're just not seeing production from Erickson Eck or Kunin. Um, Marcus Foligno, if you look at how this, and then if, if they're playing Ryan Donato in the fourth line, you know, this is a guy that needs to play top six minutes, I think, to be effective. Maybe, you know, he could play top nine and contribute offensively if you don't think he's consistently effective offensively. Greenaway is just a big guy. He can skate. I'm not sure how much offense he's got in him, but he should be able to contribute. Uh, Mayhew's a bit of a question mark, but I don't think the goals are adding up here for me. If you throw in Matt Zuccarello to this, then maybe this 177 jumps up closer to 190. You know, you're pulling someone out and putting him in. But even with that, I'm not convinced that they're able to be what they really need and most teams need is like 195 to 205 points from the forwards, 30 to 40 points from the D. So they're not too far off, but it's just, you know, they're a little shy here. Um, I just don't, and I, I like their goaltending. Like I like Dubnik. Daylock's a pretty solid backup. Like they've got decent goaltending. That's not their problem, but they're getting older. I don't see the young guys are jumping up and contributing the way you would expect. Um, right now, I see them, this is probably super generous. I think, again, they're probably close to a 500 or a sub-500 team, and they miss the playoffs again. Uh, unless something drastic changes at this point, they're looking to me like a bottom third team. And I don't think they necessarily should be, but they probably were really hurt, I think, from some of the moves last year. Um, you know, they basically made four pretty detrimental moves in the last 24 months. Uh, if you add Coyle, Alex Tuck, Granlund, and um, Niederreiter back into this lineup, this is a totally different team, but they don't have them. They're gone. So now they have to kind of recover from that. Um, I just don't think the replacements for those players are anywhere near what went out the door. And I'm not convinced that this is a team that's going to be able to be competitive given the improvement of other teams around them. It'll be interesting to see if Boudreaux finishes the year.